to look at these opportunities that we have to serve and grow with us. I want to commend all the ministry leaders who work tremendously hard to make some fantastic displays. And uh, these folks will be on hand to explain to you what all our ministries are about. We're sure that you can find a place to serve that's both rewarding and enjoyable. I want to encourage you to make an investment of your time and your energy that will not only produce a great return for your own life, but in the life of the church, in the lives of the people who are sitting close by you today. Church, I believe God has called us to build together. We're building harvest time together, and every one of us has a part to play. Every one of us has something to contribute, has something that he or she can do in order to see harvest time be a light to the nations and to see our homes and our neighborhoods be blessed as well. There are four keys I'd like to look at, four keys to building harvest time together, and we're going to share them with you quickly before we release everybody to go outside to the ministry fair today. The first key is this, and it's a powerful one. It's the key of prayer. Prayer is what enables us to build on the right foundation. It enables us to build with supernatural power. Prayer is the first key to building our future together because prayer invites God into everything that we do. How many of you know that prayer invites God's presence into your situation? Amen. Prayer invites God's wisdom. Prayer invites God's help and his blessing. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So inviting God's presence and his help is essential, whether we're talking about building up our own individual lives, our families, certainly when we're talking about building the Lord's church. Prayer invites God into your situation right now because the person who prays is acknowledging God simply by the act of praying. You know that every prayer is an act of humility. Every prayer is an act of humility that says, God, I need you, and I need your help. And you know what the Word of God says about the person who's walking in humility. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? He will exalt you. He will lift you up. So because of that, I believe that as soon as we move out in the direction of humility, God immediately starts to come on to the scene to help. Prayer is something that anyone can do. You may feel that you're too young, that you're too old, or maybe just too busy to serve in some of the same ways that others are serving. And perhaps that's true. But prayer is immeasurably valuable. And anybody can pray anywhere, anytime. How can we serve through prayer? It's really easy to start. Make a list of people to pray for and pray for them daily. Now, I know it's a little old-fashioned to have a prayer list like that, but you know what? Some old-fashioned things are still pretty good. Besides your family's needs, pray for your Christian brothers and sisters. Pray for the pastors. We could use it. Pray for the Sunday school workers and the youth workers. Pray for the worship team. Pray for phase two with us every day. Ask God for supernatural provision and supernatural cost savings. You know, we've seen so much of that. Pastor Glenn, I think, will share at a later time about simply how much God has saved us supernaturally on this project. Ask the Lord for supernatural speed in the work. You ought to pray for the spiritual health and unity of the church. Pray for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will set every Christian on fire and see souls saved. All of these things are things that we should be praying for every single day. Jump onto the new church website and check out the different opportunities that we have throughout the month to join in the work of prayer with other believers. Talk to Pastor Ruth, our prayer pastor, and see how you can be trained to pray better, learn more about prayer, and pray more effectively. Make sure that you come out to Fire in the Night this coming Friday, and let's unite in prayer as one church family for our homes and the needs of our community. 
You know, God has given us so many wonderful promises and encouragements to prayer. And it's really a shame that we don't launch out more in faith and take hold of those promises. Use those promises as a spur to push us to go before God's face and cry out to him. Jesus said, up until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be full. I don't know what your picture of the Lord Jesus is, but I'm excited about the fact that Jesus wants my joy to be full. He wants our hearts to be full of joy, and Jesus himself is teaching us there that that joy will overflow in your heart when you get your prayers answered. It's hard to get answered prayers, though, if we don't pray any prayers to be answered. Amen. How will we build harvest time? The first key is prayer. The second key is this, participation, participation. Participation ensures that we won't get out of joint. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look again at what the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4.16. It says, from Christ, the whole body joined and held together by every joint. I want you to say it, say every joint. Every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now I want you to notice with me something really important here. The Holy Spirit wants us to know that the body isn't strong just because it has a few strong parts. Now obviously the individual parts of the body need to work well. But what's striking to me here in Paul's language is just how important the joints are. Growth in the church comes not just from healthy parts, but from good, healthy joints. What are the joints that Paul is talking about? The joints are the connections in the body of Christ, the places where two parts come together. Doesn't the Bible tell us that we are members? You and I are the members. We are the parts of the body of Christ. And so the joints are the places of connection where the members of the body come together. This is good. Are you getting this? Woody Allen said, now, it's probably the first time Woody Allen's ever been quoted from the pulpit, but... <laughs> Woody Allen said, 80% of life is just showing up. Now, that may be true, but, you know, I think God said it even better. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. You know, it's not healthy to isolate yourself, whether spiritually or psychologically. It's not good for you. And I know, obviously, I'm preaching to the choir this morning because, after all, you all are here. But, friends... Whenever there's church, be in church. Be a part of what's happening on our weeknights. You know, so many good things are going on here on Mondays and Tuesdays and all throughout the rest of the week. And if you're somebody who doesn't participate in anything other than maybe just popping in to a couple of Sunday services in the month, then you know what? You will be out of joint. When your foot's out of joint, it's still a foot, obviously, but it can't really do what a foot's designed to do. It's weaker than it ought to be, and it can't help the rest of the body either. Why? Because its connections have been damaged. Church, if we are not participating in the life of the body of Christ, then we cannot benefit from the connectedness that God wants us to have with our brothers and sisters. We can't receive the encouragement that we need, and neither can we give it out to other people who need it. How many of you know that it's hard to meet people if you don't meet people? <laughs> Come to church, and dare I say it, Bring your kids. Listen to me, friends. Do not let your children absorb subconsciously the lesson that being in God's house is not really that important. Yes, we know there's lots of things to be taken care of at home and there's rest that we need to have. But in the church is where we learn Christian friendship and teamwork 
As ministry volunteers, so many of you have learned to pull together for the sake of the eternal goals of the kingdom of God. You know what, men? Go on one of those trips to Teen Challenge down in New Jersey where you're helping, where you're building, where you're doing together. You'll make connections with people that you never felt before and you will feel the joy of the Lord as you serve in that way. Being in church, volunteering with your brothers and sisters is where you can see the love of God in action. See, in the church, we can uniquely be a part of something that's larger than ourselves. You can be a part of the greatest thing that's going on, which is what God is doing in the world. Or you can sit at home. As we go out to the ministry fair in just a few minutes, and as you're walking around the tables and talking to people about different ministries... Ask the Holy Spirit to show you, where should I be participating? Where should I be making connections? How can we build harvest time and make it a strong house? Through prayer, through participation. And the third key is this. It's the key of giving. Giving. Giving allows us to shape the future. Pastor Glenn likes to say that we give not as a debt we owe, But as a seed, we sow. And I think that's true and very powerful. I want you to think about something with me. And I don't know if you've ever considered this before. But when you receive your paycheck every week or every other week, that money represents the value of what you've done. That paycheck is an acknowledgement of something that you did in the past. But giving is precisely the opposite. Giving allows you to take something that you have in the present and use it to influence an outcome in the future. Giving has the power to touch and change the destiny of an individual, a family, or a church. Many times you've heard us quoting Jesus' words when he said, Give and it shall be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Jesus said, people will pour into your lap. Through the blessing of God that we cannot explain, his grace attaches to our seed so that it has a supernatural effect on people and situations around us. Jesus was teaching us there that when you give somehow, inexplicably, people will begin to pour into you. But you know, we don't give merely to receive, although God does promise blessing. We give because we see important needs, of course. We also give because God is giving us the privilege of doing something with him, of participating with him in something that he's doing. How should we give? We should give with regularity. Be prepared to give something whenever you come into the house of the Lord. Be prepared to give the tithe. That's the first 10% of what God blesses us with. We believe that tithing has been God's standard of giving throughout the history of the human race. And if you get connected to God's standard of giving, I think you'll be more likely to experience God's standard of living. Whether it was before the law of Moses, whether it was under the law, or if it's now in the age of the church, tithing is the norm for God's people with offerings and gifts for benevolence over and above that. You know, truthfully, under the new covenant, God may ask us for everything, but I believe that tithing is where God's supernatural favor begins in our lives may take a step of faith for you to begin to tithe. But once you do it, I believe that you'll see God helping you to do more with that 90% than you used to be able to do with the entire 100%. You know, the well-known financial advice author and radio host Dave Ramsey said, I never see anybody who says, oh, I started tithing and my life fell apart. It's just the opposite. We should give regularly, we should give the tithe, and we should also give to outreaches and projects that help the kingdom of God advance in this world. Of course, you know that at harvest time, we have the opportunity to sow into the future and bless this region for generations to come by sowing into phase two. We can look into the scriptures and 
We can see there in the history of God's people how people gave in the building of the tabernacle. Perhaps not, certainly not equal amounts, but equal sacrifices. May it be so with us as well. Let's consider how we can help Harvest Time grow, not just in the sense of having a large building, but establishing a ministry center that will be an unequaled resource for the gospel in our area. You know, giving changes our hearts, giving changes our situation, and it becomes a powerful seed that God causes to grow with kingdom blessings. We can build Harvest Time through our prayers, through our participation, and through our giving. And finally this, we can build Harvest Time through our service. The final key is the key of service. Worship team, you can come back, please. I think you know that God's kingdom is upside down from man's point of view. You know, in the world, important people don't have to serve. They are served. But Jesus modeled for us a different way of life. Jesus said, I am among you as the one who serves. Jesus said he didn't come to be served, but to serve. Service brings us a special closeness to the Lord because we're following in his footsteps. He calls us to live a life like his, not only serving God, but lovingly serving other people and even putting their needs before our own needs. You remember how the Apostle Paul said, through love, serve one another. I can't explain how it happens, but I know that so many people in this room could testify to the blessing that came into your life when you turned your gaze away a little bit from your own concerns and when you started to think about how you could relieve the burden of your brother in Christ. It did something. It changed you a little bit on the inside. See, our society teaches us from a very young age how to be great, how to be number one. But Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest in God's kingdom, then you have to learn to become the servant of everybody. So the Bible encourages us, prefer one another in love. Bear one another's burdens. Find a practical need and fill it. You know, maybe find something that's not so glamorous, something that doesn't have a lot of spotlight attached to it. And maybe just be willing to lay down your preferences and just do it. We have some ministries in the church. Of course, every church does have some ministries that are unnoticed, that don't get a lot of publicity. And they need your help too. Cleaning a storage closet or cleaning a kitchen isn't necessarily something that's exciting. And you know that the world doesn't put a whole lot of value on things like that. But see, the world doesn't understand that the world's savior is the one who girded himself with a towel and was willing to wash the feet of his followers. That was his example, Jesus said, that we should do the same. Does that mean that we all need to literally wash each other's feet all the time? Maybe not, but we can all relieve the burden of others and give practical help to people who need relief, who need refreshing, and who need care. Don't worry about getting the credit all the time. You know, Jesus said an amazing thing. He said that God's keeping track of every small act of kindness that you do. The Lord said if you merely give a cup of cold water to somebody because they're one of his saints, you will in no way lose your reward. Someday God's going to reward you for every small deed of kindness that you did, even all the ones that you forgot about. You see, church, leave it in God's hands to get your reward. Our reward ultimately is from him, and the Bible assures us that he will repay every one of us according to our works. How can we build the Lord's church together with him? It's going to require our prayers. It's going to require our participation. It will necessitate our giving, and it will certainly need our labor and our service. We have an opportunity before us this weekend to grow in fellowship, to grow in service, and maybe 
just to feel the smile of God upon us a little bit brighter, releasing his joy into our hearts as we serve him and as we serve each other together. Church, let's build harvest time. Come on, would you stand together with me? Let's give the Lord a hand of praise in this place.